Hey guys, in today's video I'll be showing you how you can reduce your buffer bloat. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering how to reduce your buffer bloat, so I'll show you some ways you can reduce that. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe as I do post videos every Saturday at 1pm East. But yeah. Now, one thing before I get into the video is that buffer bloat may not be the root cause if you are having like pink spikes or packet loss issues. If you do have these issues, I have a whole other video on that. and. Another thing you could do is just check if it's a server issue. You can do this by using Gear Up Game Booster. This basically will just use a different route than what your ISP chooses by using different hot points. And that way, if one of your ISP hot points or routes are buggy or they're given issues, you could fix that by just going along another route. So it's definitely something to test if you are having pink spikes or pack a loss issues, or if you just live in a country where the server is far from you and you want to see if you could lower your ping, then I recommend giving gear up a try. If you don't like it, you could just uninstall it, but that's just something to test as buffer blow may not fix all of your pink spikes or pack a loss issues. So the first thing we're going to do is disable bufferless tracking. It's basically something that's used for debugging that's useless. To disable this, we're going to click Windows key R and type regedit in here and click enter. Next we're going to expand HP local machine and system, then current control set, services, we're going to look for NDIS right here. We're going to expand this and click parameters. In here you should see a value called track NBL owner. You want to right click, you want to double click that and then set this value to zero and then click OK. If you don't have it you could just right click click new and do our 32 bit value and paste it just like this and then click enter and then save it but that's how you would disable bufferless tracking now buffer blow usually happens on the tcp side of things so if you're more interested on udp then you could go check out my udp video but for tcp we're going to be using tcp optimizer you can get this by joining my discord server link in the description below and then heading over to programs and scrolling all the way up it should be like the fifth download make sure you get the latest version but once you have it you want to run it as administrator once you have it ran as administrator you want to click custom right here and choose your network adapter right here as well and you can click modify all network adapters too for tcp window auto tuning this will decrease your speeds if you set it to disabled, but it will also drastically decrease your buffer bloat, so I recommend setting this to disabled. If it decreases your speeds a lot, and but it like really significantly reduces your buffer bloat, but you can't sacrifice your speeds for it, then you could try experimental. That's an option that people use, but that's just like one of the main things you could do for buffer bloat. For window scaling heuristics, you want to disable this. Congestion control provider. If you're on Windows 10, then use CTCP. If you're on Windows 11, you might have another option like BBR2. If that's the case, then use BBR2 if you're on Windows 11. I'll have the commands for this in the description below if you do want to use BBR2, by the way. I'll just link it in my Discord server somewhere in the resources channel. For received side scaling, RSS, you want to enable this. Receive segment coalescing, it's a type of power saving, disable that. MTU, you can set this to 1472. Windows default is 1500, you could keep it at default, it doesn't really matter. Time to live, you want to set this to 64. And all of these, you could disable as well. Now that you've done that, you want to head over to advanced settings. Now for advanced settings right here, you don't have to touch these top two right here. For local priority, you can put this to 4, host priority 5, DNS priority 6, and BT priority 7. Max in retransmissions, you can set this to 2. non sac ITT resiliency, disable that. Initial RTO, put that to 2000, and min RTO 300. Non best effort limit, you can put this to 0. And do not use NLA, you can put this to optimal. Network throttling index, I recommend disabling this, but if you do disable this and get a bunch of DPC issues or spikes, you could keep it on default, but I would recommend disabling it. For system responsiveness, you just put this to 10. You could put gaming if you want. If you set it to zero, it's just gonna automatically set to 10. If putting it to zero makes you feel better, then you could just put it to zero, but it's really gonna set 10 at the end of the day, so I'm gonna keep it on 10. 
Disable Nagel's algorithm right here. If you play Minecraft, don't touch this at all. If you don't play Minecraft, then you can disable these and enable this one in the middle. File system cache, you want to enable that. Size, you don't really have to put anything in here. Max user port, you want to put one under the max, so 65534. And TCP time to wait delay, you want to put this to 30. Once you do that, you just want to click apply changes right here and then click OK. Once it's done, it's going to ask you if you want to reboot. You could click yes if you do, but I'm going to click no because I have more things to show you today. One thing I want to show you guys quickly too is these Ethernet settings. To get to them, you can just right click your Ethernet down here. Open network and internet settings. Change adapter options. Right click your Ethernet properties or Wi-Fi. Click configure right here and then go advanced. Once you're in here, you want to disable some power savings like advanced EEE. Energy efficient Ethernet, Gigabyte Light, Green Ethernet. You can also disable power saving mode right here. Shut down wake on land and select the suspect you can disable. And these three wake ons, you want to disable that as well. And WOL and shut down wing speed, you want to set this to non speed down. And for speed and duplex, should be around here. Yeah, right here. You want to make sure that this is set to auto negotiation. You can have a bunch of connection issues if you set this to one of these values. So make sure that it's on auto negotiation and just click OK right here. Now the last thing I want to show you is just limiting bandwidth. Basically you could do this on certain routers like Asus, Netgear, TP-Link. What you would do is do a speed test right here by waveform and get your download and upload. And then you would log into your router settings by typing this IP into your browser. If this IP doesn't work, then you can replace the 0 for a 1. But in here, you will look for a bandwidth limiter or maximum. And what you want to do is look at your speeds and then set the maximum to 90% of like the lower end speed. So in this case, it's the download. So we would set the maximum to 90% of this, which would be 800 around there. And that should reduce our amount of buffers that we have reducing buffer bloat. Now, sometimes a higher upload can also cause a buffer bloat as well, especially if it's way higher than the download. So if you can, you could try matching the download and upload speeds, or you could go a little bit lower on upload. But that's just one way you could reduce buffer bloat if you're able to do it. Now, that's it I have for you guys in today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe as I do post more videos like this. If you have any suggestions on what content you want to see, you could join my Discord server, which will be linked in the description below. But yeah, see you in the next one.